morning, everybody. I am here with Gemma Jerome, this lovely lady here. Hi. And I wanted to take the opportunity in this beautiful forest to have a little morning chat with this lovely lady. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Gio King, Jaladrome, and I'm a refugianist, bridger of worlds and dimensions, nonprofit executive director that is here to usher in a, a new library, a library of conscious co creation. <laughs> and I'm here with one of the greatest humans I've met yet in this time. This is Jen Madrone. She is a body worker, a sound healer, energy healer, teacher spiritual mentor and I really wanted to invite us into this incredible forest that we're in. Uh, we're in the redwood trees, the Douglas firs and I was really curious. We're gonna talk about a deep topic today and Jen is definitely someone I would go to regarding this topic. She has a wealth of experience. There is a humble beautiful and articulate voice that comes from her on this topic and many other topics that we've we've definitely traversed and what I would like to introduce into the field for all of us witnessing this today is regarding awakening spiritual transformation those different feelings that we what's going on uh, I'm kind of freaking out. I don't know what's someone, anyone help, you know? And um, I'm really curious about this topic. This is something that you work with a lot. And so I thought I should interview Jen and talk about some of these things, bring up some questions. And uh, yeah, we'll just jump right into it. What is this awakening that people are hearing about, feeling about? and the spiritual transformation. What is all of this? And first, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing this moment in one of both of our favorite places on the planet and, um, and one of my favorite topics to talk about. So, you know, the process of spiritual awakening, when we're talking about awakening, it's really a shift in consciousness and it can come as an experience, but it's really so much more than just an experience that can happen subtly and slowly, or it can happen really quickly and spontaneously. Mm. And it's a shift in vibration that comes with a shift in consciousness. And so it also creates a paradigm shift on a, on a big level. So we're literally waking up inside the dream. We're, mm. we're waking up inside this dream of ego consciousness and all of a sudden everything has shifted we realize that we aren't actually our thoughts that we aren't actually mm. our our bodies that we aren't actually this list of identities and responsibilities that we thought made us who we are you know and beyond that we also see that this world is also so much bigger than what we thought it was. So much. And so it's just this shifting, and it can be something that turns us upside down, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and change our entire life. That happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's exciting and incredible and scary and confusing and all of these things. But it's so beautiful because it opens us up to who we actually are. You know, it opens us up to looking deeper inside ourselves to find out why we're here on this planet and, and you know, what this bigger purpose is for us mm -hmm. and, and who we really are. And so that's why it's so exciting to me because the process of awakening facilitates a really deep healing for us on a very personal level mm. but as we see this happening across the planet in a much bigger way it's also facilitating healing for the entire planet and so as each one of us shifts our vibration personally it's creating a vibrational shift that echoes out mm. and trickles out to the entire planet coalescence mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I can imagine, you know, as we, as we have that ability to fully dive into ourselves, that echo hopefully will affect other people going that deep. Yeah, and it's not hopefully, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Resonance. It, it just does. There's no avoiding it because mm. we are all connected. Mm. And as we dive into the truth of who we are, then that is the next step of realizing that the truth of who we are is connected to the truth of, of everybody and everything on this planet. Mm. And we see that ripple effect that happens in the energy field and then translates to the physical plane well that kind of like leads me into my next question which is just like how is this showing up on the planet like you hear about it if we if if we are like experiencing this at this exact moment and then there's so many of us around us like what does it look like what's going on and what is actually happening (laughs) you know what is actually happening cannot really be put into very clear words. Mm, As soon as we try to define it, it kind of changes it. And also because the experience is different for every single human on this Mm. planet. But what I've been witnessing and seeing is that this awakening process is happening for more and more and more and more people. Mm. Whereas like, you know, 10, eight, 10 years ago, when I really dove into this, there wasn't that much information about it. There was not very many people who had any idea what I was talking about, <laughs> you know, who, who could really... She's crazy. Uh-huh, I got a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> and now there's so much information on it. And we can see it in our culture. We can see how things like yoga and meditation mm. and the different healing practices have really become a lot more widespread and part of the popular culture. And that really, really excites me because it shows that there is a shifting in consciousness happening. And, you know, I, I've i been seeing it happen as I do this work um, on such a much bigger level in all different corners of our planet. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling more and more it's it's not just this like i'm under a rock and kind of like sheltered in these thoughts but like more and more like i'm walking down the street or i'm in the grocery store or i'm sitting at a cafe and like people are having that conversation and i'm like i'm not the only one anymore right it's amazing right <laughs> yeah. it's amazing and it's so beautiful and it's people that you wouldn't expect you know it kind of blows any judgments that we have out of the water because it is really happening on a widespread level. What's a physical example of some of these transformations that we're witnessing? Does it have to do with the physicality of the environment? Is it solely from like an inner vibrational shift that then is echoing into everybody else? Because it really is a very personal process Mm. and it shows up different for everybody. And so the awakening process can be catalyzed and ignited by a lot of different things. And it's something that um, can happen spontaneously, although it's fairly rare that people, you know, haven't really, nothing's really happened. And all of a sudden they, I've talked to people who have gone to bed one way in this regular stress-filled, you know, um, conscious, ego consciousness. Mm. And then they wake up and all of a sudden everything has changed. Everything has changed. They're in a bliss state. They're totally present and nothing happened. And so that's the spontaneous awakening that um, is fairly rare. It's a lot more common for it to happen um, through traumas, through mm. things that just turn our life upside down. So things like losing a loved one, death, violence, illness, um, injury, uh, divorce is a really big one that catalyzes Mm. this awakening process for a lot of people. It's anything that just turns your world upside down, shifts things so completely that you you question everything and that you let go of your reality. But it's more than just a mental experience. It's a visceral, uh, vibrational shift that happens um, sometimes when we're in that shock state or when we're extremely depressed at the very end of the line, we just want to give up and then something snaps and it shifts and the vibration changes and, and 
and we change and we have this transformation that happens. And so it can happen, um, you know, with a dramatic experience. It can also happen as a part of the process of um, seeking answers and pursuing a spiritual path. And so we, we see these awakening experiences happening with people who are doing spiritual practices, who have a deep meditation practice, a breathing practice, or even having a plant medicine experience mm. can facilitate this sort of awakening process. And it can happen you know, very, in, in a very big way, in an explosive way. In, a, in where we can pinpoint, you know, exactly when that, that happened was the for us. Yeah. And it can create very blissful feelings and it can bring us into that moment of pure presence or it can just be a complete blowing apart, a complete falling apart. Both of these things facilitate that awakening process. And it can also happen more subtly and more slowly over time. You know, especially with people who are on a spiritual path mm. and, and doing spiritual practices, they find over time that they've shifted immensely. So much. Yeah. That's mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, it, I mean, there's always those, those, those pivotal moments uh -huh. in the shift, yeah. which I can definitely account for. And it's, it's this like layer by layer, mm -hmm. layer by layer, yes. where it's been peeled away. And like, I'm just slowly going, Oh, there's a massive shift again. Oh, there's a massive shift again. And then there's this whole snowballing period of integration. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for anyone, whether it's happened with a really big experience or more subtly, there's, there's always that peeling away of the layers like mm -hmm. you're talking about mm -hmm. and the stripping away. And so there's, there's always another step it's rarely a one and done experience totally well there's two things that just popped up that i'm kind of curious about one that i'm sure some of our viewers may have had this kind of experience where they hear about shadow mm -hmm. because i'm i feel like part of during those moments of shift there's this like Ugh, i do not like what i'm being reflected yes. i do not like what's in the mirror right yeah. now it leads into this other aspect, this spiritual bypassing. Mm. And so you mentioned, you know, as people start to research and uncover information and they do wake up in that state of bliss, I feel empowered with this mm. new information. And yet I feel like I just skirted by something because something percolates back up mm. that I didn't deal with mm -hmm. to ask you about that and see if we can navigate what is shadow. Can it lead to this spiritual bypassing? How do we deal with that? How do we deal with spiritual bypassing? That's a great question. It's, it's so good because first you hit on um, what happens in the process, this shadow side that comes to light where we get uncomfortable, where we see things that we don't want to see or experience or deal with. And, you know, that that is part of the vibrational shift that happens because as our vibration raises through these experiences, anything that's not a match for that higher vibration is going to come to the surface to be cleared. It can't exist in the same realm. And so all of those old traumas, all of those pieces of ourselves that we've shoved down and buried down under the surface, you know, the old limiting beliefs, um, the old programming, uh, all of the difficult pieces of our life, they're going to start coming to the surface. Mm. And it can be deeply uncomfortable, but it is an essential part of the process. But it can be so difficult to understand because if we've had this awakening experience where we've had this deep connection with how we now see see that we can be because that's what an awakening experience often does. It shows mm. us, it gives us this experience of how we can be. And then it says, okay, if you want to live this kind of life, if you want to experience this on an everyday level, now are you ready to do the work? Mm. And so the work is clearing out all of those things that come to the surface that we call shadow, that keeps us from being deeply connected with, with source, with ourself, with our bliss, with the divine. Mm. And so that is the purpose when these things come to the surface, when we feel uncomfortable, 
we need to know that we're right on track. That we're exactly <laughs> where we should be. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's way more fun to pursue these new interests that we have. And they are pivotal and they can be amazing tools for us and amazing tools in their transformation. But we have to remember that they're just tools and that our ego can use them to kind of pull us away from that self-work that is going to keep draining that power from the ego. And so sometimes we get into the um, world of bypassing because it's just too painful to deal with those things that have come to the surface and we just don't want to look at them. We'd much rather be feeling um, inspired mm. and, and empowered and strong. And no they, one wants to feel bad. Exactly. Yeah. But they can go hand in hand. We just can't use them to avoid the deep inner work mm. because if we want to use these new tools, it's just essential that we don't get distracted because it's the inner work, it's the peeling away and facing the shadow and facing the fears that is going to allow us to sustain that connection with mm. ourselves, sustain that connection with the divine, and then create whatever it is from that place of beauty and authenticity. Mm. We get thrown off. We just don't want to deal with that heavy stuff and with the pain for a minute. And then we find our way back. Yeah. You know, because there is, you know, in people who, when we experience these things, it creates this deep desire in us to know truth. And so when we get thrown off, we come back mm -hmm. and we work on it again. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I, I want to reference for you and, and viewers just there's this moment of being on the other side of that shadow and the other side of that pain mm. and then seeing it in someone else mm. and and recognizing that when they're coming to you and they're like I, I know you get this so like you know what's going on and the first thing that I always like to remind them to do is just like you feel bad right now like yeah I'm like I want you to sit with it mm -hmm. just breathe with it yeah like absolutely. don't push away don't absolutely. try to figure it out just feel it yeah and like you know, nine times out of ten, they're kind of like, no, this is hard. <laughs> right. And it's like, that's, I think, the point. Exactly, because we've been running away from it for our whole lives. You know, that's why we create the attachments. That's why the ego is there, because it thinks it's protecting us from the pain. We have 40 hours a week to work, and we got to get up to work in our jobs <laughs> yeah. and, and, and pay taxes. Exactly. So exactly. I, I got to keep going. Yeah, so we're trained to run away from it our entire lives. And so we have to retrain ourselves to sit with the pain, to be present, to walk through it, and to transform it, and to know that we have the power to do it instead of giving our power away. What is a way that we can honor our process when a shadow does pop up? Where's the languaging we can use to inform people when we're going through that process? Mm. We want to respect ourselves, first of all, and our process. And so it's learning to listen to the intuition and knowing when we should share and when we shouldn't. Mm. You know, we don't need to share our process with everyone. And when someone doesn't understand, like, that's okay. You know, that's, that's really okay because it's a very deeply personal process. Mm. However, also, we also have to remember that we may share with someone and they have no idea what we're talking about, but we just planted a seed. And so down mm. the road, if they start having these experiences and things start shifting in them, then they have something to refer back to. Yeah. And, and so um, being open to the moment and continually connecting with ourselves, knowing there's no wrong way to do it, but also respecting, mm. respecting our process in a, in a really big way. And it kind of opens up something I wanted to talk about is the different challenges that come up for people. And that's definitely a big challenge yeah. for people is communicating with the people that they love when they're going through this vibrational shift, when their world just turned completely upside down and all of a sudden you feel like you can't really connect and communicate with the people that you've been close to mm, because they so don't real. really understand what's happening. It can really create a deep loneliness in us because we don't feel like anyone really understands what's happening 
and it can create a lot of confusion as well when things turn upside down and we don't have a reference for it and we don't really understand what's happening and um, there's other ways that it can show up so it really um, not just mentally but emotionally like we talked about with the shadow stuff coming to the surface and also physically um, is something that not everyone is aware of that this transformation process, this vibrational shift is shifting and changing us on every level. And so physically it can show up as strange illnesses that are not explainable, that they haven't been able to get a diagnosis for. You go mm -hmm. to the doctor and they're like, there's nothing wrong with you. Mm. But you're having digestive issues or you're having migraines or you're just having weird pain moving around your body that wasn't there two days ago that comes out of nowhere um, and so it, it really can affect us on every level and make it really challenging to move through our day in so many ways um, it can also it often comes up for and for me this was one of the biggest symptoms was this crazy energy moving and pulsing through my body and um, it sometimes was coming out my fingers and sometimes just through the whole body. It felt like I drank, you know, five cups of coffee and <laughs> hadn't had any. It was that totally uh, wired but tired feeling and um, produced altered states of consciousness. Um, mm. And so it's just important to know that it can show up in all of these different ways because when some of these symptoms come up, it makes people feel like they may be losing their minds. They may yeah. be going crazy. And um, that happened to me. <laughs> oh, quite a few times. Yeah. In layers. Yeah, exactly. And so um, we need to remember that it's part of the process because we, this vibrational shift is causing a detox process mm. in our bodies, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually every single level is, is, is up leveling, is changing. And, and so, you know, those are just a couple of the ways where it can show up and really challenge us in our daily lives. Is there any particular things we can do, like eat or drink or just to, to help the process as we're, as we're going through it? Self-care is essential mm. during this time. And all the basics, like making sure we get plenty of rest, um, plenty of sleep, uh, exercise to help this keep this energy moving through our bodies and clearing mm. out the, the old um, stuck energies. Drinking lots of really good water is so important. Um, I, see, I saw that for myself going through it and for so many people, especially when there's an intense transformation happening. Um, more water, more hydrating that flushes our system, it keeps things moving, um, and nutritional food to really um, nurture our system because, like we said, it's happening physically as well. So and none so, of the fried junk foods? Yeah, no fried junk foods. But they're so tasty. <laughs> <laughs> There's no nutritional value in yeah. them. Really and I'm not, as, I'm not as strict <laughs> when it comes to diet. I, I don't believe in following a super strict diet, I believe, in listening to our bodies. Uh, but if we listen to our bodies, we're most likely see that that junk food makes us feel like shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just does, you know? <laughs> and it robs us of a lot of essential energy that we need for this process. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And meditation, um, being in nature like this, um, all of the things that feed your soul are, are so They are literally tastes sweet here mm -hmm. yeah it's exactly. like a different quality of air yeah and you know if you if you even if you don't live here or in a forest like just sitting by a tree mm -hmm. sitting on grass yeah yeah i have a really tiny backyard but i still go out and sit in the grass every day you know especially if i'm at my computer all day mm. go out and sit in the grass for you know a few minutes of every couple hours and Beautiful. We can always find something, some nature. Mm. How did you get involved with this work? Hmm. 
Well, it kind of walked into my office to, to tell you the <laughs> truth, actually, because I've had a, a body work uh, a private practice doing um, energy work, body work, sound healing, and that sort of things for over 20 years. Beautiful. And about eight years ago, something like that, um, I started seeing this influx of people coming into my office with similar symptoms, hmm. feeling like they're having a nervous breakdown, um, feeling confused, feeling depressed, feeling this energy moving through their body and not knowing what it is. And, and all of them saying, you know, it, it's nothing I've experienced before. Like, I don't really understand what's happening. And when this started coming, all of these people started coming and sharing this with me, I immediately recognized it as what I had experienced myself just a couple years prior when I was really moving through the intense part of my transformational process. Mm. And so I got really excited about this, you know, excited that this was happening on a bigger level and um, found that, that these were my favorite people to work with, that I really, really enjoyed helping people through this transformational process because it seemed so important. You know, mm. and, and it yeah. still seems incredibly important now more than ever to help people through this transformational process because, like we said, it not just helps to improve their life, their relationship with themselves, but then it ripples out to their communities and to the entire world around us. So I found that um, this was what I was really inspired and, and led to do. Fulfilling. Yeah, extremely fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these things that you can't always explain why you handed the path that you're handed, but this is where I find myself. Listening. Mm -hmm. Just listening. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like that's a part of my practice right now is, is to stop pushing on the universe to give me what I want. And I've been more in the state of accepting and receiving mm. what I'm blissful about, yeah. but that just keeps arriving. Yeah. I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do this and I have to do that. I got a plan and I need a 401k plan and I need a retirement <laughs> and, and there's insurance to plan for the thing that might not happen. But, uh -huh. <laughs> and, and at the same token, now I'm like, as I, as I do more of that work and I show up, I find myself in that position of just going like, what am I going to do today? <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, a phone call hits or an email comes through. And they're like, would you accept this project to work on? It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That's exactly what I want to do. Yeah, because you're in the flow state. Because you mm. did the work of removing those shadow aspects that were blocking you from that. And so it's so beautiful when we are able <laughs> to see that happen. Because that's really our natural state. Mm. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. Mm. Just like walking. Yeah, exactly. Just, blow just like breathing, state. just like walking. Well, it's nice to hear that reflection that mm. it um, feels and sounds as though I'm in this flow state. It definitely feels like that. And I've done a <laughs> lot of work, like a lot of it. Um, and I'm, it's not done. It's never done. It's never done. Yeah, it's never done. But. When we really peel away those big layers and get the big <laughs> chunks done, it becomes so much easier. And, and the transformation becomes more graceful, mm. you know, once we've really faced our fears There's and walked caring. through the okay. fire. Well, I don't know and then we just work on the, the subtle, I more subtle details. Mm. I, of course, want um, everybody in the world to experience the flow state um, and to get to that point. And, of course... I also don't want anyone to spiritually bypass going like, well, I'm already there. I, you know, I read it in a book. And it's like, <laughs> well, did you feel that way? Or that, that hill and valley comes mm. and you get hit with it and you're like destabilized on earth and you realize, oh, that's that work. Mm -hmm. That's a wave. Okay. Right. That needs to be looked at. Because it will keep coming back. Yeah, and yeah. better to get it done the first time around rather than like the seventh or eighth or yeah. ninth. And most of us are hard headed, so it takes <laughs> three or four at least. <laughs> True. <laughs> Often. And and so in wanting and in feeling inspired and, and hopeful for the rest of humanity to experience this, um, I I'm curious, like how can more and more people find out about this 
what can we do? Or is there any offerings that you have for people? Where can they find you? Mm. What can we do? Because I know there's people urging, like, okay, I want to get started. It's like, okay, <laughs> well, where do we start? Yeah, that's a really great question, like too. So starting always starts within ourselves. Mm. And then we often get to a point where we need help. You know, and I know for me in my process, it was essential and it was a pivotal moment when I found the right people that could help move me through the process gracefully, help hold space for me while I heal. And so that's why I do the work that I do. Mm. Because I'm honored to be that person who can hold that space and help guide people through that process of transformation. Mm. And so I do that on a, in a couple different ways. You know, it started locally with uh, my offerings here, mm -hmm. and and I've been expanding it um, via the internet because I've found that there's a lot of different pockets in this country where there aren't as many resources. Mm. And so um, I offer uh, different ways for people to work with me online. And some of it is through one-on-one -on -one work um, when there's uh, very personal issues and specific things that need to be worked through. Mm. But the main way that I work with people who are going through this transformational process is in small groups. Oh, great. And so that way we can hear each other's stories and we can support each other. And um, we can meet people who are going through this as well so that we don't feel like we're alone. And we're not the only ones. <laughs> we're not the only ones. <laughs> it, yeah, and finding that more and more and more that there's so many people going through this. And so just by connecting... We are empowering ourselves. Mm. But more than that, um, when I'm guiding small groups of people through this process, we're learning the tools that we need to face these fears and to heal the past traumas. And we're changing the old programs that have kept us stuck mm. and rewriting those programs and really looking at the limiting beliefs that have caused suffering in our life over all this time and essentially peeling away the layers of illusion that our mm. ego is built on and the layers of attachment. And as we peel all of these things away, the illusions, the attachments, the fears, the traumas, all of those things, then we're able to connect really deeply with ourselves. Mm. And so this is the work that we do in our group and you know we can be that reflection for each other and in that kind of safe space we're able to walk through these fears and you know and then having someone else who may be able to see something that we can't see at that moment is extremely helpful Beautiful. and we are people that join um these groups we're we're able to connect with each other as well yeah exactly awesome so, yeah, the, the small group that I'm talking about is a program that was designed for these exact purposes. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so people can um, join that program, and it's a, we cover a lot of information in eight weeks, and so we do a lot of really deep work. And so it's for people who are really committed to this transformational process and committed to their growth and may not really know where to start or just need some guidance and some tools and some understanding mm. of what's happening. And so it really creates that spiritual foundation that they can take with them as they continue to evolve and grow and, and transform. Beautiful. Yeah, that's the eight week program that I offer and um, people can contact me for more information about that. I also have a Facebook group that I've started and it's a free group that nice. anyone can join, although it's a, um, it's a private group to just you know, create a safe space for everybody. So Continue. you have to request to join. Okay. Um, and that group is called Diving Through Death, a egoic death on the road to awakening. Mm. And so we'll leave that, that title at the end as well so that you guys can find it brilliant oh jen thank you so much yeah thank just, you Gio. yeah just for 
walking through that and letting us experience that. And I'm sure many of us have more questions and that's what the Facebook group could be for. Yeah. So. And feel free to reach out to me with any questions, a private message on Facebook and I'll leave my email and all of that stuff so you can find me. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Gio. Really enjoyed talking with you today. Likewise. Yeah. And thank you, Forrest. Yeah. Thank you, Tree Spirits, <laughs> for having us. It's just a beautiful day. And um, just a friendly reminder for all of you out there, if you haven't already today, go find some grass or a tree and breathe in that oxygen that they're providing for us exactly. for free. Exactly. Get outside. <laughs> love and grace to all of you mm -hmm. and love and grace to you. Yeah, Thank you so too. much. Thank you, Gio. Mm -hmm.